Okay. Um, hi, I'm uh, Jonathan from Kaltura. I'm an architect in a, a Kaltura open source video platform. And uh, like Jess, I like cats as well. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, lessons that we learned during the, uh, uh, during the years in Kaltura, how to uh, overcome the, the uh, known limitation that uh, REST API is textual and how we uh, deal with many uh, media files using our REST API. Um, so video is used today, um, uh, video media generally is very significant uh, content in the internet. Uh, you need it for, uh, to, to, you need it, it's, it's affecting your costs, it's affecting your traffic, it's affecting your storage, it's affecting everything that you do, and of course it's affecting your API. Um, first we have to define the enemy, to know what's the problem. Um, I could show you uh, graphs, uh, charts uh, of how media uh, used uh, today uh, in the internet and how it will be used in 10 years. And of course, all the boring charts always show the same. Uh, it's always going up. And the conclusion is uh, uh, always the same. Uh, you can't ignore media anymore in your application because media is used today not only in media companies. Media is used today on your cell phone. Media is used today in enterprise companies, in uh, uh, universities, and so on. So, uh, in uh, Kaltura, we are doing, uh, we aspire to do what we call everything video. Everything video means that we are doing that we are doing uh, capturing and conferencing, transcoding, encryption, um, streaming, both live and VOD, um, edge teaching, client side and server side, recording, playback, distribution, syndication, and so on. Everything is done in Kaltura using API. Everything is REST API, which is textual. So, uh, Although REST is HTTP, and HTTP, uh, although it's originated, originally created for uh, hypertext, uh, since the very beginning, HTTP supports uh, media files. Uh, we know put action to push files to the server. We know post action that can, uh, sorry, post method that able to, uh, to upload files to the server. Uh, get, you can get progressive download. You can get a video or a, image uh, using get uh, method and today you can even stream a uh, video over the uh, HTTP using HLS VOD or live. Um, REST, although it's based on HTTP, it's fully textual. It's an in, in industry standard and uh, um, what we uh, used to, uh, usually we use get, delete, post, put, all these actions using um, uh, using textual path, textual query string. Tech, if you need a uh, complex data structure, you will need JSON or XML, whatever you choose. Even in the response, everything will be textual, JSON or XML. Um, <clears throat> of, course, of course, there are simple solutions in the uh, industry. Uh, some uh, providers use a put to push uh, files to the server. Um, the problem with push is that it supports only one single file uh, and you don't have uh, the ability to add to the request complex data structure. Of course, you could use a uh, very complex data structure in the path or in the uh, query string, but it's not designed for that and it could be uh, very uncomfortable for the developer to push complex data structure in the uh, query string. Um, uh, Another solution is the form data. Again, the problem here, although it supports multiple files, it, uh, the problem here is that uh, you don't have a native uh, support for complex data structure that, like we do in JSON or uh, XML. Um, so I decided to investigate uh, a bit further. Uh, so I took two specimens of these media providers home. And after 10 years that I'm uh, raising them, I can tell you that they took over my sofa, my kitchen, um, probably even my brain. Uh, Ten years ago, we started with a very simple solution. Uh, the most simple to get media uh, from the internet is get. Uh, you uh, can uh, uh, get the uh, uh, 
you can get the file uh, using progressive download, but uh, usually in the industry standard, uh, the actions the, uh, to perform on the server uh, are using uh, HTTP methods like put, patch, head, get, uh, what, what I missed. Anyway, it's very limited list. We, we have five or six uh, methods, HTTP methods, and you don't have uh, the ability to add a complex request to the server. What we did in Cultura is that all our requests are sent uh, using POST or GET, doesn't matter how it's arrived to the server. And um, the action itself, what to do uh, about the object, about the uh, service that we are calling, uh, we just added it to the URL, which is a bit different uh, than the uh, classic uh, API, classic REST API, and it's enabling us uh, many different actions. And uh, of course, we support uh, the regular CRUD, create, read, update, delete, and we also added another standard to our standard that's called serve. The serve, instead of returning the object, the XML or the uh, JSON that uh, represents the, the object, it will return the media that related with the object. Um, as for upload, um, uh, we are using a post, of course, um, and you can uh, post more than one file. And uh, unlike get that uh, uh, enable you only path or a uh, query string, the post enable you uh, to send another option that we have in order to upload content to Kaltura, you just inform to Kaltura what the location of the uh, file and Kaltura will uh, pull the file uh, uh, for you. Um, of course, because we're talking about REST API, we have to uh, manage the status of the upload, uh, of the download in this case. Uh, the status, if it's failed, succeed, it's progress, and so on. Um, So the serve actions uh, enable us uh, many different uh, content types. Every object in Kaltura, for example, media entry in Kaltura contains few uh, video renditions, few thumbnails, uh, closed caption files, maybe license file, uh, different related files. Um, and uh, file upload uh, enable us to upload all these files. Now we encountered few issues while um, uh, using file upload. The first problem with video is that it's huge. Uh, we have customers like uh, Walt Disney. Uh, Walt Disney, of course, they have large uh, videos. And you don't want to wait four hours for the upload to finish. Uh, and then it fails five minutes before it's, uh, before it's done. And then the entire, you have to do the entire process uh, since the beginning. So what we did is to support chunked upload. You can upload the files in chunks. And on the server side, we combine all the chunks together to one single file. Um, Another problem that we had is uh, we have different data centers. When you call the API, you don't know what uh, data center you are calling. In fact, uh, one chunk would arrive to a different uh, uh, data center, and then you couldn't uh, combine them together. Um, so we just redirect. Uh, according to the first server, that the, uh, uh, the, the first chunk uh, that they selected to, all the chunks from this moment on will be redirected to the same data center. In each data center, we have multiple machines. We just shared it with a, uh, sold it with a shared disk. Um, chunks may arrive in the wrong order, and we uh, manage it in order to know what chunk to put where. Um, and another problem that we had is that the uh, file upload could take a long time. You don't want to f upload the file and only then to do something about it. You don't want to um, wait a few hours until the entire f video is uploaded and only then associate it with uh, with a, a thumbnail or with a video and so on. So what we did uh, to support, um, to, to enable you to uh, run the upload and forget about it, um, we enable you to uh, associate the object, the file, before it's created. So we uh, have some kind of pointer to the file that is not created yet. Using that pointer, you will relate it to the, uh, related to the object that it relates to. And later, when the upload will be finished, automatically, we will use that pointer to associate it with the object. These are two examples for a common uh, API call. In this case, uh, it's upload token get, which returns a XML or JSON uh, representing in, uh, the object. You can see that the JSON you can see that it's, that it's JSON because it's, okay, anyway, 
trust me, it's JSON. Um, you don't see the, all the screen. Um, uh, we just send the JSON using content type application JSON. Uh, unlike uh, when we are sending files, we will send a multi-part form data with the JSON as one of the fields separated with boundary from the file itself. That's the binary data. I try to save place on this on the uh, slide. So I don't have a lot of binary data here. Now, if any of you ever tried to uh, implement the uh, API of WebEx or Akamai or other company that deals with media, uh, it could be very uh, difficult, um, uh, not easy to uh, implement the HTTP by, by yourself. And for that, in Kaltura, um, we generate automatically uh, SDKs in uh, multiple uh, coding languages. In each coding language, we try to uh, follow the standard that uh, the best practice in this uh, coding language. Some coding languages using a, a string path uh, for the, uh, to represent files, like PHP. Uh, some uh, with uh, file objects, streams, buffer, and Node.js, uh, C Sharp, Java. Each one is different. In some cases, we even implemented uh, sometimes two different signatures of, the, of each uh, method in order to support uh, more than one standard in, each, uh, in one uh, language. Um, as for file download, we assume that the uh, customer don't want to uh, download the entire content, the entire media, to its uh, application memory. Uh, what we, uh, uh, unlike the object that you want it in the application memory, the data, it's the media itself, you don't want it in the memory, you don't want the binary data, you probably want to do something with it. If it's image that you want to uh, present in your HTML, you can uh, using our API, instead of returning the media itself, we just return URL that, from using that URL, you can download uh, or get the uh, media itself. So uh, every place that we define in our API, that uh, action, serve action, return a media file or any file, uh, instead of returning the file, the SDK will return URL to that file. Later, you can use that URL as, as image uh, source or as a, to send it to the player and so on. And this is, a, I selected the PHP, which is a synchronic language. Uh, it's, uh, the, the code is uh, shorter. Uh, here is an example. I'm using a, a file path, uh, which is the standard in a PHP, um, creating upload token, which is the pointer to the file that will be uploaded later. Uh, the file size is not mandatory, but if uh, we are uploading in chunks, it's very important because otherwise the, the server won't know when is the last, uh, if the last chunk arrived or not. It's comparing to the file size that we defined uh, in the beginning. Um, and I'm creating the uh, upload token using client, upload token service, add action, band the scene, uh, everything uh, translated to PHP, to, sorry, to HTTP. Um, and then using the uh, created upload token, I'm just uploading uh, using upload action with the upload token ID and the file path. Very simple, um, uh, very easy to use. Um, on the other hand, uh, serve action, um, you can send complex data structure uh, to the server. Uh, our Kaltura thumb prompts support uh, scaling and trimming and uh, background and many different parameters. I just chose two width and height which are uh, quite uh, standard in this case. Um, and I just call the serve action with the complex data structure. And what I get in return is remote URL. The URL is the uh, URL that I can use to get the content later. And in this case, I just downloaded the file and saved it to the, to the disk. But I could do uh, anything else with that URL. Now, uh, we have large uh, uh, customers uh, with a large uh, uh, amount of the media, and very soon we understood that uh, uh, just upload and uh, serve actions are not enough. So uh, at the beginning, we uh, added a CSV, which enabled you to, uh, to upload a CSV file, which is, uh, I will talk a bit more about it later. Um, XML file, which is more complex, not so easy for a uh, human, uh, uh, for human to, uh, to write it, uh, the, the complex structure, because 
media entry could be related with uh, a lot of metadata, many different files, uh, thumbnails, media, uh, closed captions, and so on. It's not uh, very easy for a uh, human to write it. Um, we support drop folder. Uh, drop folders could be on the customer uh, servers. Uh, in this case, we will uh, see what uh, using FTP, SFTP, S S3, doesn't matter uh, how we can uh, watch the uh, folders and see what's going on on uh, his server, or it could be on our servers and then the customer Our customers uh, are enterprise companies. Many of them use WebEx, so we just added another uh, ability to scan uh, using APIs the WebEx uh, server, and we are downloading the, uh, the files from WebEx. This is when I implemented the WebEx API. It wasn't easy. Um, Uh, okay, uh, CSV, as I said, is uh, the designed for human uh, writing. It's uh, supporting very uh, simple uh, properties, main media file and main uh, thumb one uh, thumbnail file and a few more properties like name. I didn't write all the properties, but basically it's name, description, tags, very basic properties. However, the XML uh, could, be, could contain many different uh, related objects. Uh, all of them could be uh, in a single uh, XML item. Um, <coughs> we enable the drop folder to drop the files manually by humans, uh, which is very simple to, for user just to drop with the file, and uh, media entry will be created on our system. Uh, but it wasn't enough. Uh, customers wanted to add uh, tags or category or user ID, many different uh, information. So we started to enable them regex uh, to uh, extract data from the file name. Uh, but it's again not enough, so we uh, decided to support the XML, uh, which is complex data structure with all the related objects, with a lot of metadata, data, uh, time related uh, information um, on the video, uh, and with one different from the regular XML that I mentioned before, this XML could relate to files that dropped in the drop folder. Now, uh, in Contra, we saw that we have many ways to upload content to the uh, server, so we decided to associate uh, this content with the files uh, in many different ways. We have asset resource, which is in fact linked to another media that already exists on the server, drop folder file mentioned, uh, server file, which is integration between our systems, sometimes one system creates a file on the server, um, uploaded file, or uploaded file, the token is uh, two different uh, ways that we do that. Uh, webcam, remote storage, which is uh, storage, uh, uh, remote storage that predefined for that specific customer. Um, string, it could be relevant for SRT, for example. If you want to upload SRT, you don't have to upload the file. You can just use string resource and URL resource, uh, which is, of course, just specifying what the URL, in what URL the uh, file exists. And in order to associate the uh, content with the uh, object, we just define the resource, uh, in this case it's URL, so I had to set the URL property, and we call thumb asset set content and associate the thumb asset ID with the resource, and all these resources supported in all our APIs uh, on all the objects that are associated with uh, content, you can uh, use each one of these resources, and also in the XML. So the XML can use each one of these resources also in order to, uh, to use each uh, Media doesn't matter how you uploaded it to Cultura. Uh, we also support uh, uh, publishing the content to external system. Um, using push, we are pushing the content to the media itself to remote uh, system, uh, and I will show a few examples soon. And syndication, which is publishing MRSS of our uh, content, and the external systems downloading the content uh, to, their, uh, to their systems. Um, these are the standards we, that we support. As you can see, uh, there is no industry standard. Um, but the most important one here is Kaltura, not because we are Kaltura, but because Kaltura expo uh, exposes all the information that we have on the media, and you can apply XSLT on that media, and using that XSLT, you can apply any different standard that exists in the, in, in the industry. And sometimes for small companies, that's what we do. 
questions? Any question? Most of that code was client-side examples. What do you have to have on the server side to support that? All our systems internally using uh, APIs between them. Okay, but I mean, is there a specific, I have to run the Kaltura server, presumably. One Kaltura server use uh, API to talk to another API, so to, to another server, so. Okay, so you're saying it's kind of symmetric. Yeah. Right, okay. Another question? What do you support as uh, backend storage? Uh, um, we use uh, our own data center and we use our own uh, shared disk. Uh, it's called Isilon, uh, but it's just uh, IT thing. It's, it doesn't really matter. You could use any disk. Uh, we used NFS for many years. It was good as well for a specific amount of uh, content. Uh, today we use Isilon. There are many providers in the, in the market. Another question? Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan.